Well, before ending his whirlwind tour to uh, Ukraine and Poland, this Wednesday, the U.S. president will hold talks with leaders from the Bucharest Nine, a collection of nations on the most eastern parts of the NATO alliance. Joe Biden wanting to reassure allies that his administration is aware of the threats and impacts spurred by the grinding Russian invasion of Ukraine. While speaking in Warsaw on Tuesday, a day after he visited Kyiv, Biden pledged unwavering support to Ukraine. Hours earlier, though, Russia's Vladimir Putin delivered his State of the Union address, and in it, he announced that he was suspending the New START nuclear arms treaty, which Russia had signed with the U.S. in 2010. For more, we can speak to Dr. Paul Vallée, an associate fellow at the Geneva Center for Security and Policy. Thank you for speaking to France 24. Uh, we heard dueling visions from Joe Biden and Vladimir Putin about this war and what lies ahead. What were your takeaways from their speeches? Well, of course, the uh, speech by Vladimir Putin uh, came first. Uh, well, if uh, you expect, except the, the one that uh, Biden was pronouncing the day before in Kiev. But uh, uh, of course, Putin's speech was uh, much awaited uh, in terms of uh, what he was going to uh, declare uh, in regards to the uh, conflict in Ukraine, and um, indeed, you know, the, the suspension of the uh, New START treaty uh, is, of course, an extremely preoccupying uh, move uh, that uh, obviously seems to fit in uh, with uh, Putin's tactic of trying to intimidate the West and to indeed, you know, use the uh, the nuclear question uh, as a uh, leverage to force uh, those countries who might be wavering in the coalition to support Ukraine uh, to withdraw that for fear of uh, going towards a nuclear escalation. And uh, when then we look at uh, Joe Biden's speech, uh, uh, of course, a uh, speech delivered in, in a slightly different uh, uh, kind of atmosphere, you know, the speaking, of course, uh, in the open to uh, uh, to a large assembled public in uh, the center of Warsaw. Uh, we have here uh, a uh, statement of the at least the constancy of Biden and the U.S.'s uh, policy of support for Ukraine. Uh, there's this, uh, I think, this determination uh, to show that in response to Putin's speech, uh, uh, there can be no intimidation uh, and that there is a resolve to uh, resist. Uh, and that kind of falls in line, you know, in the uh, the traditional uh, U.S. policy of containment, uh, which always posited that, you know, if you uh, emitted some resistance and a, and a statement of your ground uh, in the face of uh, intimidation by Moscow, uh, then Moscow might actually be compelled to uh, move back. But part of Russia's image, isn't it, uh, in terms of making these provocative statements, is that it, it, it itself has this resolve that perhaps the West might not be able to rally together. But on Tuesday, we saw sort of a rare public spat, the, the, the Wagner mercenary group saying that military chiefs were failing to resupply it sufficiently. That's something striking coming out of Russia, isn't it? Uh, it certainly is. And, and, and of course, uh, most of the anticipations a year ago uh, had been that the, the Russian military power uh, was such that, uh, that Ukraine was bound to fold. Uh, and it has not. Um, and of course, because uh, there has uh, been, of course, uh, Western military support for Ukraine, uh, but most of all, because the Ukrainians uh, altogether have been determined to uh, fight and not to give uh, away an inch. Uh, and in the face of that, of course, we, we've seen a, a Russian military underperformance uh, that then led to the rise uh, of uh, this private military company that has tried to hog the limelight and to pretend that it was the solution to uh, uh, winning a, a, a victory for uh, Russia and Ukraine. So in fact, we're, we're also, of course, uh, seeing not just the signs of, of this uh, underperformance by the Russian military, but also uh, a certain uh, lack of uh, coordination and, and, and disunity in this, this military effort. And, and as a result of these disappointments, that, uh, of course, tends to fuel uh, the, the radicalism that we see in the position that Vladimir Putin is adopting. Yeah, and that underperformance by Russia's military, is that perhaps why we're seeing China's top diplomat meeting Vladimir Putin today in Moscow? 
Uh, well, certainly uh, the uh, Chinese uh, diplomatic position in respect to the conflict has been very useful for Russia in, in that, uh, you know, China uh, in the past has been uh, such a, um, a stickler for uh, for the sovereignty of states. Uh, and, and certainly it does, you know, uses that sovereignty argument for, for its own ends uh, quite uh, quite often. Uh, but the fact that, you know, it... it, it in its attitude, ended up condoning uh, the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine, uh, has proved, of course, very, very, very useful. And now China is, of course, uh, trying to position itself uh, as a uh, potential provider of a uh, diplomatic solution. Uh, though we have to understand that uh, that that position mainly consists in trying to obtain for Russia uh, the gains that it has been wanting to obtain uh, in its uh, invasion and, and, and use of force. Uh, so, of course, there, there'd be no real peace uh, in, in, in that kind of scenario, except for uh, the total victory of, uh, uh, of Russia. But the fact that Russia has become also dependent uh, on, on on China to achieve these end, these aims uh, also says a lot of uh, of this underperformance that uh, it has experienced. And real quickly, we're running out of time. If Ukraine and the West are to persevere, um, are leaders going to have to maintain the pressure they've already applied on Russia, or do they have to take a new strategy? Well, certainly, uh, uh, the important thing is, of course, to keep the momentum of the, uh, of course, the diplomatic and political support. Uh, we'll see that in the UN vote, uh, in the resolutions, in the application of the sanctions, and of course, in the uh, supplying of uh, weapons. There's little more they can do for the moment than keep the uh, state of course. All right, Dr. Paul Valley, thank you very much. Paul Valley speaking to us from Geneva. Thank you very much.